Welcome. We continue with part one, lesson four, psychological reactions and self-perception theory. I'm your instructor, Nicholas Cohen. We describe the deficit model in the writing reflex as effective approaches for treating infections and asked in the previous lesson, does the approach work for helping people change behaviors? Think about yourself. Perhaps you have a behavior that if you change, your health would benefit. Has a healthcare provider ever tried to help you? Did they use the deficit model, telling you what the problem was with smoking or being overweight or drinking too much or having a nail in your head and telling you what they thought you should do about it? If you had an experience like this, did it help? More than likely, the hope for response that you would decide to make the change and commit to the plan the provider offered did not occur. If you were told to lose weight, stop smoking, drink less, take the nail out of your head, rather than feeling motivated and prepared to change, you more than likely felt defensive, maybe even ashamed. You may have thought, what does my doctor know about me or what I have to go through? Or how hard it is to change? What was happening here? The doctor was using the deficit model, a proven strategy for infectious disease, but was using it on your personal behavior. Why didn't that work? Your reaction was actually a normal human reaction. That normal human reaction was described in this book. When we are told what to do, we perceive a threat to our autonomy and we have an instinctive reaction to resist. Psychological reactance is that normal human reaction to resist being told what to do. And it's the reason why telling people to change, to stop smoking, lose weight, take the nail out of their head, for example, usually doesn't actually work. If you go back to our internal committee, you can think of it as the healthcare provider siding with the change talkers on our internal committee. We're familiar with the arguments, but we have those counter arguments. What form does psychological reactants take in this case? We take up the arguments of the sustained talkers. Is that a good thing to be put on the defensive? The answer is no. And it can be explained by this man. What happens when we are made to voice the arguments against changing? Daryl Bem in his book, Self Perception Theory wrote, that people form their attitudes about themselves by observing their own behavior and concluding what attitudes must have caused it. So if you put someone in the situation where they are advocating for the status quo in response to being told what to do, they say, or at least they think, that they don't want to change and that they can't change. What happens is they learn about themselves by what they're saying or thinking. They hear themselves saying, I don't want to change, and change is impossible for me. And they actually form an idea of themselves that they don't want to change, and that change is impossible. The process leads to them talking themselves out of changing. So if the traditional model, that deficit model, where you find out what's wrong and tell people what to do, doesn't work for personal behavior change, is there an alternative? Is there a more effective approach for healthcare providers to help people change? We explore this question in the next lesson.